Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, one of the first iterations of this larva or worm enemy that I'm creating. Um, in this case, I have no textures whatsoever. I'm simply simply focusing on making it move in a worm-like fashion. Um, you know, trying to find the formula of scaling the bounding boxes or these little uh, boxes, which I'll later have a texture map to in a way that you know makes it look like a larva. Um, so, I mean, I think I pretty much nailed it at this point. Uh, you know, I had to spend a lot of time kind of dialing it in, you know, doing lots of adjustments until it would look just right. And, um, you know, this is where the enemies start. You know, it's like I usually have to focus on on making them move realistically rather than looking at, you know, their actual design and that kind of thing. I simply know that I want it to be a multi-segmented creature and that I want it to move like a larva. That's all I know. So I, I focus on movement and how it functions rather than its external appearance, you know, whatever horns or thorns it has on it. All right, so this is the next iteration of it. I had to make it so that it would work. Uh, it would turn in a circle. Um, yeah, and you, as you can see, I have a very disgusting um, photo texture. I pulled it off of Google Images. It was one of the first uh, results for Maggot that I could find. And each one of those little boxes that you saw earlier, now they all have the texture mapped to them. And um, this black line that you're seeing, that's a circular path. It's uh, it's kind of like if you think about, say, Flash or maybe Illustrator, you can create a Bezier curve out of points. This is the same thing. And um, I'm simply having it so that the worm is, like the, the X and Y positions of each segment of the worm is calculated off of that point, uh, off of that path. And um, yeah, so I mean, the thing is that if I change the path, then it changes the direction that the worm takes. And every segment of this uh, worm is following the path like it's a rail. So I get really good control over the curvature and motion of the worm. Uh, at this point, I'm still not focusing on AI. I'm simply focusing on locomotion and mo uh, mobility for the worm. Uh, because when you figure out how the worm moves, you know, that plays a huge factor in its uh, artificial intelligence when you try to figure out how to make it go where you want it to go. So anyway, this is the, uh, that's when it starts to look really, really disgusting. I actually thought it was really kind of loathsome. And the worst thing about this uh, photo texture is that it's got these little, the person who shot it used a, f a camera flash. And so the flash shows up these little white spots, but you know, because my screen has, um, you know, large, larger pixels, you know, I can, these little white spots are kind of flickering in these, uh, in these pixels and it looks like it's uh like it's glistening it looks really really repulsive and disgusting and that's good i mean that's that's the thing it's like um it, it's nice that you see this is why i focus on movement so early is because this movement is really i mean aside from the photo texture this is this movement is really what's making this worm um feel convincing and feel like it really is uh moving like this um anyway uh, on to the next one okay so this is um now i've broken it out of the circular loop and I've put in the first iteration of code, which is, <laughs> as you can see, is creating a wire. It's, it's extending the path as the worm gets close to it, and it's removing the path as the worm gets away from it. So, you know, this is just very, this is, I wouldn't even call it you, uh, AI because it is not intelligent at all. It's, it's simply artificial um, movement, I guess, or artificial guidance, but it's completely random. It's simply randomizing the, um, the, the angle at which the worm is, uh, the, you know, which the path is taking as it extends. And, um, and you can see how the worm is, like every segment is slavishly following this path. Actually, if anything, it looks like the worm is kind of impaled on a coat hanger. And um, that, I think, in itself is pretty darn ill looking. You'll probably notice also the number of segments has changed on the worm. I can just change a little, uh, a constant, just, just a number, it's a variable. I just change it and that affects, oh God. Yeah, um, I don't like looking at this worm when it actually goes off screen. Um, I mean, it's just a digital worm. It's completely not real. Um, and yet, you know, I, I think the worst thing for me is whenever I look at like worms or spiders or bugs, and they go crawling, you know, off screen. Like if they're, if I see them in real life in my place, I see like a spider crawling across my screen. Okay, fine, I can see it, I can deal with it. But the moment it like falls off my monitor and it's like, oh my god, it's amongst my feet now. Um, yeah, so it's the same effect whenever this little guy, you know, makes his way off the screen. It's really fucking creepy. Pardon my friend. All right, now let's see what this one is. Ah, uh, oh yeah. Okay, so what I've done in this one is, oh. This is where I actually have it chasing the mouse cursor. So if I move my mouse um, over to the bottom right, yeah, it, it 
this is where I've, I've got it so that it's intelligently um, creating the path according to where the, the mouse cursor is. The, the, the worm has a minimum turning radius. Uh, it can only turn so tightly. And so every time it, it oozes forward and it begins to run out of path, it starts creating more path. And so I can now guide the worm wherever I want, or rather he's chasing my mouse cursor. And if I just leave my mouse cursor in one spot, he'll just circle around and around it. So this is, and again, you know, I'm not going to call this intelligence because he knows exactly where the cursor is and there is no real kind of thinking or figuring out going on. So I can't even call this artificial intelligence. And, um, you know, I guess when I, when, when you look at a lot of video games, uh, you have to ask yourself, um, whether the video game simply knows exactly where the player is and is, you know, pathfinding towards the player or if it is actually making the enemy think like you know there's any actual kind of figuring out going on on the part of the enemy or be simply magneting towards um you know a target in xy position so this i know is is completely inaccurate um you know for a real larva because larvae either do not have eyes or they have very crappy eyes and they rely largely on on other senses like vibration and smell to find their way around and so, you know, I think it's it's at this point that I kind of realized, you know, I kind of have to start to, I, I started to have to, I started to have to think about, um, you know, how the worm uh, behaves, how it, how it sees the world and what kind of, you have to think about what kind of information the worm actually has um, for it to find its way around. Anyway, it's kind of fun to just guide this little guy around and <laughs> watch him do his thing. All right. Oh my God. They're multiplying, multiplying. And so this is a, a test. Um, you can see the tails are kind of flickering. There's a bit of a, a bug going. <laughs> These bugs have a bug going on with their, their behinds. Um, that has something to do with me erasing the path a little too soon. I'm also trying out different sizes of worms. I have a scaling factor which can be applied. And um, I'm using it to affect the speed at which they do their thing. I can just, you know, every time I hit F5, it will, uh, you know, restart the simulation and it will reshuffle their sizes. And so right now it's like they're, they, they kind of all go straight for a while as they run out of their initial path and then they start to, you know, create this new path that they're following. And I tell you, the little guys are like the most convincing for me. They are really, really creepy. They're, at this point, they're still chasing my cursor and there's still a lot of kind of lag time between when I move the cursor and when they actually, um, you know, when that path actually catches up. But right now they're still not intelligent. They're still just, uh, there's no thinking on their part. They're just following wherever the cursor goes. And so... Um, you know, that, that's why I say they're, they're not intelligent. There's no searching or thinking going on anyway. God, they, they look really disgusting when you see a lot of them. Okay. So now I actually have it integrated into the menu. There's a little button at the bottom that says monster test. I shouldn't have put it at the bottom because people hit quit are probably going to accidentally click that monster test button. But anyway, too bad for them. Um, and so, whoa, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I've got it so that now they are facing the mouse cursor. Um, you know, like they they're they're not moving. If I click the mouse button now, they'll actually start moving forward. So I guess what this is, this is me trying to figure out um, you know, a way to again, I'm working on locomotion and making it so that they have a way of um smelling out where the mouse cursor is. So they're pointing towards the mouse cursor. When I press the mouse button down, they begin to follow it. They're still not intelligent right now. But what this is, this is um this is state changing. Uh, I'm, I'm be trying to make a state-based AI where the, the worms will first be looking for the mouse cursor or looking for their bait, and then they will move forward. Again, they're still not intelligent. This is just me laying the groundwork for intelligence where they, the, the worm will have a different state of thinking where it says, well, okay, I know where, you know, I, I don't know where the, the, um, the target is versus, you know, actually, um, you know, actually moving toward, towards the target and trying to get the target. So this is, as you can see, is a really you know early version. It's it's still a lot of groundwork, and so when you're trying to make something that is uh, very complex, you're trying to do complex um, artificial intelligence. I wouldn't even call this complex artificial intelligence. I just say if you want to simulate any sense of intelligence, there's a lot of groundwork required. And so anyway, yeah. Okay, so what's this one? Oh, <laughs> all right. So so now I have. Um, Wow, I got a piece of bacon now. So whenever I click, oh, okay, wow, this is this is actually fairly advanced now. I've got a there's this little piece of bacon here, and so it's I've I've just narrowed it down to one worm. I'm just trying to dial down the uh, the problem to to a single worm, and um, yeah, the piece of bacon is as you can see, it's it's very buggy. He's not you know behaving properly. Um, he's going in this kind of infinite loop right now. 
the bacon is just that's the bait now i click to set where the bait point is and you can see that there's a bunch of numbers at the top left corner these are you know some of the the, the variables that are tracking you know how he's thinking there's a little thing that says ai path stale and what that means is that whenever um whenever he's moving in a direction that takes him further away from the bacon that that path that he's following begins to get stale um at this point he doesn't actually know the x and y coordinates of the bacon um all he knows is um you know just how strong the scent is and this is the thing is like you can see there's an ai goal strength there's an ai goal direction so the strength that is the strength of his smell indicator so here let me just uh restart that and see if it works out now okay so he's gonna crawl for a bit okay so the pastel hit zero now he goes searching that little red speck you see that is his sniffing point so he has to wave that around like a geiger counter and yeah, that's the problem. He's over, he's turning and he's not lo he's basically locked in his, you know, in his rotation. He's overturning. He knows he has to overturn, but there's nothing that's getting him out of that overturn turn loop. So, this is you can see is an early version where, you know, I've I've hit a a snag. I've I've I screwed up somewhere. And uh, he's not behaving the way he should be. Um you can also see like um there's this little variable up here that says AI state two. State two means he's walking. State zero means he's searching, right? And you can see as he waves it left and right, you can see that those numbers changing. That is the, the like, when you see the strength values going up and down, you're seeing um, he waves the thing left and right, and he tries to figure out, um, you know, which direction did I wave that, that little ball to give me the strongest signal? And if I waved it so far that I had to turn all the way to the, to the, you know, to the limit of my left turn or all the way to, to the limit of my right turn, then, you know, do the overturn, keep on turning. Um, the only problem is I have nothing, no contingency to, to get him out of that turn. But um, all it does is it just simply tells me that it's working. So if I just put the bacon kind of, you know, maybe, well, here, let's let the path stale run out first. Okay, now I'll put the, whoops. <laughs> As you can see, right, it's like the moment he starts moving closer to the bacon, um, you know, the, the walk cycle, you know, uh, resets itself as it should um so here i'm gonna just let the pastel run out and then when he okay now he goes into a stiff sniffing mode okay so now he's sniffing all right so now you see ai goal turn let's see if that that behaves properly no it's still broken okay well let's go to a later iteration all right what's this one doing now yeah so it's like i i think right at this point now i've got the i know exactly how the ai should work and it's just a matter of dialing it in dialing it in and making adjustments so he'll move forward he'll sniff around i says all right and now he knows he has a turn so he's gonna he turns uh, and now here's the problem right he's turning a little bit and now he's getting out of his his turn loop too fast and plus you can see that um when he does the sniff his head kind of retracts it doesn't extend all that far right because um, the worm has to be able to lift his head off of the ground in order to um to do the turning and so, you know, in order to do that, if he's fully extended, well, he can't lift his head off the ground. He doesn't have any leverage. So that's why I have him retract somewhat, you know, so he's got the leverage to lift his head up. So these are just little subtleties that I, I'm thinking about. But in any case, he seems to be doing a pretty good job of finding his way to the bacon. So here, let me just move it over here. And let's see how he behaves. Okay, so he's moving relatively in the direction. You can see the pastel is being refreshed. And then at some point when he, I guess when he's out there, he, he realizes he's actually getting further from the bacon. And now he goes through a sweep cycle. And also the sweeping point is too far in front of his head, you know, so that, that itself is another bug. And, and now, yeah, okay. So the, he's not continually turning, you know, he had, he had to check too many times. This, this is the problem. He's having to check too many times. And also that sniffing point is way, way offset. That's, that's really wrong. Um, how that's working. So here's the thing is that he's sightless. He has to find his way by smell. Um, and he has to work off of, um, you know, a relative sense. He doesn't really have, he doesn't know exactly where the bacon is. He doesn't have, he doesn't have distance and he doesn't even have pure direction either. He simply has a strength of a smell to go on. And, um, and you know, this is where I can say he's, he's, He's using his intelligence. You know, he's there's some actual thinking, uh, thinking or figuring out going uh, ahead. And to me, the, the thinking and figuring out is is this system where you move forward, you take a measurement. Oh God, he's off screen. And um, yeah, you, you think, you take a measurement, and you act upon it. And then you you do another experiment, you take a measurement, and then you move on. So now I can say, you know, this is his artificial intelligence, however flawed it might be. All right. So now I have. Uh, the latest iteration, I will not call it the final iteration of the uh, the AI. 
So now you got the little guy. Yeah, now you can see how he's just, no, 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 it's over here, right? So seeing the little guys move is actually a lot more fun because, like, you know, they move so much faster. And then he's going to go in a circle. And he's like, oh, hang on, hang on, wait. Somebody move the bacon, right? So there you go. Now I've got him so that he's he's trying to find, he doesn't know exactly what direction. You know, he's got to play a game of, of um, you know, hot and cold to find, you know, where the bacon is. And so he, I think I got a problem where he's overturning. He's overturning way too much. Um, but, you know, all the same, it's, it's really cool to see a little one uh, do its job. Yeah, there he goes. And now he found the bacon. I mean, he'll find his way there eventually, but it's just not efficient. That's my problem with it. I want, him to, I want his movement to be efficient. So, what's he doing now? Okay, I mean, he's generally heading towards the bacon. It's, it's getting him closer, but I think at some point he's going to realize, you know, this, this isn't getting me closer. I'm going to have to... I'm, I'm going to... Oh, there he is. Now he's in search mode. Yeah, so he's in a gradual turn. Ah, yeah, there we go. So now he gets really close, and you'll notice that he does a lot more checking as he gets closer and closer to the bacon. You'll probably also notice that the AI goal strength in the top left corner, that value is like climbing like crazy. That is because the strength is an, is an exponential fall off. So if I move the bacon all the way down there, right, now the strength you'll see is, is a whole lot less. And plus I have to actually jack the number up like crazy because I'm, I'm doing what I call strength delta and movement delta. So what this is, 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 it's not just checking relative strength or relative, it's not just checking the, um, the strength, you know, whether or not he's getting hotter or colder. I also have to check to see um, whether the rate of change of, yeah, whether the rate of change is, uh, is going up, not just the, the actual value. I need to see that if, um, if as he moves, if, he, if he's moving like directly towards the bacon, then that number should be rising like crazy. So the strength delta, the smell strength delta should be rising like crazy. This number should be really, really high. So I'm making him act based on the strength delta. And plus the thing is that his movements are not consistent. He doesn't move in a, it, in, I wouldn't say a straight line. That's not as he does move in a straight line, but the problem is that he moves in this oozing movement. So he kind of moves in these little jumps, these little lunges. And so the problem is that his movement is not a constant number. So I have to take that strength delta and divide it by his movement and, and that way I get a consistent reading. So this debug value that you're seeing here, you know, it's kind of a, a consistent reading. Um, but even then it's kind of jumping up and down and it's kind of crazy. But um, yeah, that's like a later iteration of it. So I, let's move on. All right, and so this is the latest iteration that I have as it stands. Um, and so yeah, once again, I've gone to the giant room full of worms. The reason I'm doing this is because the large worms take longer to do their thing. They have a, a larger turn radius, and I need to make sure that the that this is working. Like this, this worm AI is working for all sizes. So I'd say it's working rather effectively. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you look at any particular worm, you can kind of see that they're making. Oh, what's this guy on the right doing? He's kind of confused. But you know what? Here's the other thing is that I know um, that, you know, worms don't always know exactly what they're doing. Sometimes you got the occasional guy who's a little slow to the party. Um, you know, this is mostly just their grazing AI. This is not the AI that they use when they're actively trying to go after you. Um, it's like if you're the thing is, I'd like Akimbo to eventually be a free roaming game. Um, and. What I mean by that is, is, is like, you know, you can just travel, you can explore, and it means there's some, that you're not always going to be in combat all the time. You're going to find some enemies that are just, well, that won't even call them enemies. They're just wildlife, local wildlife, which is, um, is just grazing. So this is their grazing AI, and I don't want to just have them doing an idle animation. I want them seeking out food. I want them seeking out warmth and, and, and to seek out their companions, and, you know, it's, it's, I actually want to have three levels of, uh, like, I want them to have three levels of, of, of values, like maybe a level for their hunger, a level, f a certain amount for their, their, their loneliness, and a certain amount for, um, you know, moisture, and a certain amount for, for heat. Um, and so the thing is, they'll have a body temperature, right? So if they're in a cold area, their body temperature will begin to drop. And once that body temperature falls below a certain threshold, you know, then they're going to start placing a higher emphasis on finding a heat source, you know, so they can sit next to it and warm up. Well, likewise, if they are out in the open way too far from their friends, you know, they're going to say, well, I can't reproduce here. There's no, there's no friends around, you know, it's safety in numbers. And so they're going to start, you know, seeking out their friends. Um, and, and, you know, if they're hungry, then they seek out food, et cetera, et cetera. This is kind of like, to me, like what, what it's like in real life. So 
you know, I am designing these worms in a way I, that I would um, make a worm simulator. You know, I would probably make a, I think I'll probably add like a, a terrarium feature in this game, which just, um, you know, for me, it's, 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 a, it's a developer test room to see how they're behaving and if they're behaving in a natural fashion. Um, and, you know, then you can just, you know, throw the bacon somewhere else and see how they behave in the terrarium. And I can add in other bugs that will, pre you know, that are prey or predators of these little guys and, and you know they feed off of them and i i know this is not like their this is not their combat ai right like their combat ai is much different if you start shooting at them and you make a lot of noise and a lot of light then they actually do get a much stronger sense of direction as to where you are and you know they'll probably be able to figure out you know actual distance so they get your actual position and um when they're under attack they're going to be a lot more lively they're going to be they're going to move in panic mode right now in grazing mode these guys are in power saving mode they're 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 trying to move efficiently and they're not moving all that fast so they don't tucker themselves out but when you're there and you're shooting at them and being hostile and and, and all that stuff then i'll have them you know really spring into action and start spraying acid at you and trying to melt you down and and um and hem you in but uh right now this is just their grazing ai and, and this is the thing, is that when I play a lot of video games, um, I find it's during those idle times when you're not in combat that the games, if they're going to fall apart, that's when they fall apart. It's because you have a bunch of NPCs standing around town, they stand in the same area, they can stand there for an hour, you know, and they're always there the whole time, they never even get tired, and they say the same two darn lines, right? Never do they ever go, you know, I'm kind of hungry, I'm going home. I'm going to home get food. You know, like they, they don't do that. Or actually, you know, when they do, they're like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm going home. They have to speak it out loud. And that is not at all how people behave in real life. I, I don't know if you do, then there's something wrong with you. Um, you know, so the thing is, I want, I want guy, like, I, I just want to have, you know, NPCs and animals and creatures that are just generally trying to, you know, eke out a living. They're just, you know, trying to, trying to stay warm, trying to stay with their friends, trying to get food. And, and, you know, behaving in, in that fashion, you know, just right now, these guys are completely unaware of each other. So they're kind of walking all over each other. So that part is kind of breaking down. But, um, you know, this is this is what I, I, I want to get in terms of uh, immersion. I'm not doing any, you know, amazing normal mapping stuff. I'm not doing any groundbreaking graphics work. Um, you know, all I'm doing is, is just some simple, you know, it's, it's some programming. The, their AI is incredibly simplistic. Um, you know, wave their wave your nose around and then move in the direction where the smell gets strongest. And as you're walking around, keep smelling. Right? That's that's all it is. It's a really simplistic AI, but it took me about three days. Um, you know, like not three days nonstop, mind you, but you know, over the course of three days and a lot of messing around and trying to just figure things out and playing video games in between and and whatnot. You know, help me figure this out. Um, also, you know, in the past, I've I've had to deal with a lot of caterpillars. When I was a kid, I used to rear these, you know, not the, not maggots, but tent caterpillars, you know, and much to my mother's dismay. And then later on, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, I went to my mom's house to help her, you know, get rid of some tent caterpillar nests that were growing, uh, that were basically living in her uh, crab apple tree. And I went up there with a, you know, pair of pruners and a blowtorch. And um, oh man, like I tell you, I've I know what the, how they behave when they're when they're agitated. Um, you know, so that, that stuff will leave deep stains on my soul that will never come off. And so I'm bringing these deep stains, you know, to the game, you know, just to kind of, I hope, I hope this stuff evokes a reaction in people. Mind you, they're completely digital. There is no realistic, you know, stuff going on, um, you know, in, in, and it's just me bringing my experiences and my knowledge of, you know, how a thing behaves this is what I want is I want to have a deep understanding. I want to bring it you know, to you in the game. And, um, you know, if you download the game demo, you can try it too. You can just click wherever you want, place the bacon, uh, hit escape to get out or F5 to, you know, uh, to, you know, it's just, um, yeah, you know, you can, you can start messing around with the worms. Um, I think I'll keep the bug room up, you know, as long as I, as you know, and if, even if I, even if I wind up removing the bug room from the menu, I'll probably make it so like you can like say hold control and click in the bottom right corner and it will bring it up, you know, so that'll be like kind of one of the, the, uh, undocumented or you know the well-known easter eggs you know that you can mess around with so yeah these guys god they're really really disgusting so what you're seeing here these are some actual scribbled hand scribbled notes uh, that i was making when i was thinking of the worm of course some of them got cut off and yeah as you can see this is where i i figure out you know that I want him to have a path that he moves on these things. Like the thing is, I I simply know enough about Game Maker Studio. Like I've I've seen that it has the capability for paths. I I've seen that it has commands that let me 
say, I want to create a, a path with these points, with this smoothness, right? It, knowing your software allows you to figure out, you know, what you're going to do next. Um, how do I explain this? Is that I, I'm not a person who just makes, who does just, I can't just do random things. What I do is I work off of, um, I, I guess my thinking process is like if I have a bag of parts, right? You can take a bag of random parts, dump them in front of me and ask me to make a tricycle, make a grenade launcher, make a, you know, something like that. Like I'm, the way that I think is, is not that I, I don't like come up with five gazillion different designs and then try them all out and then, you know, see which ones work. I don't, I, I don't work. I'm not a spaghetti designer. I don't throw a whole bowl of spaghetti at the wall and see which ones stick. Um, you know, like there are, there is a, like a lot of design, um, professionals will say, you know, that's the way you do it. Do lots and lots and lots of different designs and, you know, get the one that works. Um, in my case, I work a little differently in that I work within limits, right? People say, these are the only pieces you have now quick MacGyver, make a jet ski. That's how I work. And so when I look at Game Maker Studio and I look at its, its API, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's like, I look at the SD, it's essentially, it's an SDK and it has all these tools that you can use. Um, I'm just working with whatever is there. I, it's like, I say, I want to craft a worm. I know exactly what commands are offered to me. I know what parts are on the table and I assemble them to, you know, make whatever things I can. Um, so this is, you know, that, that's the initial way I'm thinking about how to make it work. Um, you can see how I'm, how I'm figuring out which parts of the worm are latched and which parts are stationary when it's, you know, when it's doing its sniffing routine. So you can see there's how it flails his head to test the turning to gather data before it places a point and move forward so i mean all this stuff i figured out on paper and when i program and i sit down i'm actually coding things you know that i'm not really thinking i'm not really designing new things i'm not really doing new things i might be doing a little bit of tweaking and testing and dialing things in but the real thinking goes on here on paper away from the computer i actually yes you have to get away from the computer this i think i design I, most of these sketches i think are probably done like I don't know, on, on the staircase, like, or downstairs, you know, like just sitting down and, and figuring this stuff out. So, you know, sometimes when I wake up, you know, my first half an hour of the day is actually spent, you know, sketching and thinking about what I'll do next. And so these are those little levels, right? Those are those little levels where I was talking about, you know, food, water, warmth, and companionship, and even a level of pain, right? And so what happens is that worms, you know, want many things, you know, like I think that living creatures all want many things, but it simply becomes a matter of priority. And so when these levels of food drop down below a certain threshold, then these things become a priority. And the further down they, they fall below the threshold, the more urgent that priority comes, the more it influences the action of that thing. Um, you know, so, you know, our player's mech will emit a bunch of things. It emits vibration, it emits heat, it emits light, and it has a smell of metal. These, these worms are metallivores. They like the taste of metal. They like, the, the thing is, metal is one of the, the, their, their dietary requirements. It's like a vitamin, it's a mineral. It's something that they need. So, you know, these are things that, these are the things that your mech provides or, or emits or emanates that these, that, that these worms give a damn about is, are these things. Um, you know, I'm thinking about things like, uh, ah, these are state changes, right? So up here is a it's kind of cut off, but it's a state change diagram, you know, where, um, you know, he'll, he'll be walking forward. So up there is where he says he walks forward. Then he, then it, there's a state change where he goes through a flail search and he plants a point and he advances, you know, I have these little, these like. The thing is that the little arrows, there's a transition right there. So the transition here is where I say he has to plant a point. Um, it doesn't govern everything that's going on there. That is stuff that I have to do in the programming to make it really work. And I have to test it out and, and drive it forward until it, you know, completely works out. But, um, you know, I'm trying to, to imagine how the worm behaves and how it changes the states. Um, you know, these are this is a this is a grocery list of things that I think matter to a worm or what the worm might do. There's no ordering whatsoever. So in a way, it's kind of like it's it's a sketch of a sketch. You know, it's like I haven't even worked out what things I want. So I mean, moving, turning, moving towards goal, feeding, uh, heat and moisture, light and sound, vibration and pain. You know, those are the four levels. So so these are my grocery lists, which wind up organizing their ways down to the into the corners. Um, temperature extremes, physical impact, crushing, overpressure, shock, and distortion. Oh, these are all. Oh, these are all subheadings of pain. You know, different different forms of pain that it can have. So, I mean, if it's a temperature extreme, something's too hot, then it knows to get away from the heat. If it's physical impact, then you know it it will curl towards wherever the impact you know hits it. Uh, crushing and overpressure. You know, it, it it will try to wriggle itself free. Right? Shock and distortion. You know, like so, shock and distortion will behave differently. You know, it will, it will actually get numbed and it will kind of be stunned for a while. Right? And and nervous stimulation. That's like 
well, I guess if you could put a cut in it, right, there's like an actual pain. So this is nervous stimulation from existing wounds. You know, it's like if it's been burned in an area, it's, it's going to be constantly experiencing this pain. So, I mean, this is the thing is I'm trying to simulate life. When I work with an artificial intelligence, I'm trying to simulate that it is alive, that it feels pain, that it, that it, it actually, you know, feels, you know, actually like it actually gets hurt and it reacts to this thing and it, it's alive. Um, it's, it's, I know it's, it's still just governed by a bunch of state changes, you know, and it's all code in the end, but I, at the very least, when you're playing it, you need to feel, I need the player to feel like, you know, he's alive. All right. Uh, different states of when he's asleep, KO means he's been knocked out, uh, hostile, fleeing, sensing, sensing and exploring, or I guess I should call it grazing. You know, so these are all just a whole bunch of things that, that I want to, you know, think, think about. Um, and let's see what else do I have? Oh. This is my first page, or no, that's not my first page. This is my first page of, of notes. Right, so I mean, I'm trying to say that, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got my, my path points here. Actually, maybe this is my second one, or my, I don't know. But anyway, um, I've got two path points, and I'm using, this is where I'm figuring out. I'm lerping or doing a linear interpolation between two path points, or multiple path points, and so, or, or along an entire path, so... Linear interpolation is kind of this uh, this programming term, which I I don't want to get too much into. Um, I guess the idea is that if you have point A and point B, and you give it a lerp of fifty percent, then it means that you're going to get a linear interpolation of the halfway point, right? If you say seventy five percent, then it's a linear interpolation of you know where this point is, you know seventy five percent along the line. And lerp of zero means right at the point. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just if you imagine this long curve, it's kind of funny. I said I wasn't going to explain it. I explain it anyway. Um, if you have a long curve, you've got a start, you have an end. I'm simply lerping his position along the whole path and saying, well, he's 50% along the path or 100% along the path. That's how I'm calculating you know, his, his head positions using the path to do that. And I'm simply modifying the path and wiggling it left and right. I'm just moving the points to, uh, to make him turn. Um, this is... These are, this is when I was, these are some of the early ways in which I was thinking of him, where I was thinking of individual segments, segment zero, one, two, three, four. It turned out that his head was not segment zero. His tail is segment zero and his movements are all move, like he's driven from the back and moves forward. So I have, it's kind of, this is, it's kind of funny how this is reversed. You'll see a compass direction north, right? There's a goal. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how does he think, how does he behaviorally think when his goal is this way or that way? How does he turn? Um, suction relax constricted you know these are diagrams that i want to use for you know when he's actually as each segment behaves right so i mean the thing is like with suctioned i guess the the the, the part is kind of pulled wider open and it gets shorter right relaxed constricted means that his outer sheathing it is an outer muscle sheath which squishes on his guts and it squeezes him wider so this is my thinking of how you know how i want him to to this, I mean, this isn't actually getting programmed into the game. This is just how I how I understand. This is just me documenting my understanding of the worm. And yes, I know this stuff, but I have to get it on paper, or it's going to be bothering me until I write it down. Um, you know, if the goal is inside the turn radius and he spins forever, I could call this a glitch. You know, I could make it so that he does a three point turn. But you know what? He ain't that bright. He is he is just going to kind of spin forever. I guess. Um, I don't know. I could have it so that he backs up, but I rarely ever see worms that actually back up you know i think i'll just make it so that, like if he spins forever on it then he'll decide he's satisfied enough and i guess he just has to be close enough to food rather than actually getting his head on a tiny little food point you know chances are junk chunks of food are actually going to be larger than the worm himself anyway so not a big problem um oh gosh yeah this this is my thinking about the three-point turn right so i say if a worm is entering from the right and he's doing a turn then I say when he must do a three-point turn, when, you know, if, if he's... Or, like, I say that if there's an object that is within this circle, then he must do a three-point turn because this is his minimum turn radius. Um, but later on, I decided that, you know, if we slice that in half, then if it's back here, then he'll go forward, he'll come back around and get to it, right? Whereas if it's in this region, then he has to back up, you know, and, and do a three-point turn. Um, and if it's outside of this region here, then he'll go forward and he'll just, you know, turn towards it. So, you know, these are my ways of thinking about the turn radius. But the thing is that this does not work because he doesn't know exactly where a thing is. He doesn't know the, the distance, nor does he know the exact location or direction. All he has is the scent strength. And so that's why I ultimately wound up ditching this this very smart algorithm because he's not, he, he's just not, his sense of sight is just not that good. He doesn't have sight. He has a sense of smell. Um yeah, this is my figuring out of the turn radius. These are my my crappy, crappy math, which is probably wrong. And that's me figuring out, you know, 
um, the, the radius within, within those things, you know, the circumference of a circle is two pi R, right? Radius. So to find out radius, then I just take R and I bring it over there. You know, that, that's all it is. I'm just, you know, moving things around. Oh, gee, that's wrong. That should be R divided by circumference. Ha ha. I screwed up my math. Okay. So I failed basic, you know, trigonometry, ba my basic math, uh, right there. Um, you know, figuring out how I moves anchoring points. Um, you know, what about end length worms? You know, can this be extensible? You know, I, I don't have, for now I have a single unit. So I'm treating him as a single unit, but he's multiple segment, right? Later I want to have multi-unit worms like millipedes where you can see multiple waves of convulsion or multiple waves of their legs moving. And, um, you know, these are just more worm pass segments, stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, middle units are slave to the head. How does he think? Which part of him thinks, right? So there's the, there's, you, this is a multi-unit worm, which I haven't done yet. I think I will approach it later on when I, you know, when I, once I have the, the single unit ones done and I'm satisfied with how they work, then I'll work into multi-unit worms. So there's so much more that I want to do with these worms. You know, I can I can do them of all sorts of different sizes and widths and, and whatnot. You know, later on, I want to make it so that you can shoot them and damage their individual segments and split them in half and they'll writhe and freak out. And, and um, you know, there's lots of stuff I want to do. So, I mean, I'm trying to simulate life as best, best I can. And um, does it make the game harder or easier? I don't really know. I, I simply, the thing is that I'm trying to keep people immersed and make them feel like, hey, you know, like I'm actually shooting something that's alive and rah, that's what I want. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. It's like, I, I guess I'm making a simulator more than I'm making a game. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there can be other enemies besides the worms. I mean, the worms are just one species out of many other species that I intend on adding. And it really depends on, you know, the biomes and also depends on how much, um, how much I make from this, right? Cause like if I, if I don't make anything, then working on the project and shooting a ton of, a ton of this kind of effort into something that no one, you know, no one's paying for, or no one, like I, if it can't sustain me, if I can't, you know, keep me alive, then I have to stop. I, I'll be forced to stop and I'll have to, um, I'll have to do something else. I'll have to make a different game and hope that one does well. So, you know, that's the life of a game maker is that I just, you know, I just have to hope that people will donate to the project or, or whatnot. But um, no, I'm not doing Kickstarter. OK, I'm not because Kickstarter is for making giant finished projects and, you know, putting them out. This is something where it's like my old jalopy that I keep on modifying and modifying and modifying and adding and adding and adding because, as you can see, this will be a huge project. I am just one person. I cannot work on this thing for years and release the thing at the end and hope that it does well. Instead, I release something that is playable and add functions and features and get feedback from people and just make it so that, you know, you buy once and you just get all the updates free. So, and, you know, and I just hope that people share this, you know, this movie around or share the idea around, you know, so that, um, you know, that's the thing is that I, I want people to share it as much as possible just because hopefully some of those people that you share it to will buy the game as well. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have to say on the topic.